This video is going to cover three different ways of doing the cloth turn-ins at the corners. The first method is going to be the standard method that's used in most books, as you can see here. And we'll just call that the standard cloth turn-in method. The cloth at the corners is trimmed at 45 degrees to the book one and a half times the board thickness away from the corner. So in this case, where I'm using two millimeter board, I'm going to trim it three millimeters out from the corner. Here I'm showing measuring the three millimeters, marking it, and then I'll cut it with a knife. You can also buy jigs for cutting the corner. The next way I'll show how to do it is I'll measure the three millimeters I'll mark it, and then I'll use a pair of scissors to trim the cloth. Having shown these two methods for precisely measuring and cutting the corner, I'll also show you how I do it. And this is following the philosophy of Bernard Middleton, who really believed in efficiency. And in this case, there is no advantage in terms of quality. If you're out by a few degrees in, in the trim or fractions of a millimeter away from the corner, it makes real no difference to the quality of the finished product. But it's so much faster to just um, trim by eye these corners that uh, I, I think there's a great advantage in developing confidence in being able to do that. And, and finish work or complete work much faster. So once the corners are trimmed, uh, as always with book binding, we always turn in head and tail first. So in this case, the head and tail are the short uh, edges. So we turn uh, over the turn ends, use the bone folder to turn the uh, cloth up nice and crisply and squarely so that there's no uh, hollow on the top. Use your fingers to pull the cloth over. Now there's going to be a little tab of cloth that sticks past the edge of the board and the idea is that you use your thumbnail or a sharp bone folder to push that little tab down over the corner. So do that at both uh, corners. Do the other head or tail, I'm not sure which is which, is in a practice board. Here's a close up of pushing in that little tab of cloth. Having done the head and tail, we do the four edges. Use your bone folder to mould the corners, get them nice and square, and uh, if there's any 
uh, excess cloth sticking up, you can force that down. Um, if there's too much cloth, you can trim that off with a pair of scissors. The second corner is called, well I'll call it a universal corner, it's often also called a library corner. And this corner is all about robustness. Laura Young says they are rather unattractive and bulky, but they do eliminate any possibility of the material fraying. Arthur Johnson says it's not an elegant method, but it's hard wearing and, and will not burst open on impact. I usually round off the corners with some sandpaper so there isn't a, a very pointy piece of uh, grey board sticking into the uh, cloth. There's no trimming required in this method. The first step is to put adhesive on the corner. I'm just using straight PVA because I don't need any slip and turn in the corner. When you turn it over, you then push the cloth down along the edge of the board and uh, onto the um, other side of the cloth. The fast tack of PVA is an advantage here. Use your bone folder to make sure there's nice crisp folds and stretch the cloth down into the uh, uh, onto the edges of the board. Go ahead and do the other three corners.
with these corners it doesn't really matter whether you do the head and tail before the four edges but it's probably good practice to do it that way anyway. At this point you can see what Laura Young means about them being rather bulky, so just use the bone folder to try and um, compress the, the cloth to reduce that bulk. Finally do the four edges. I've probably been using a bit too much PVA uh, and that's why I'm getting so much squeeze out. Um, luckily it's a very forgiving cloth that a bit of a moist rag will clean up the excess PVA but if I was using a, a more um, less waterproof fabric then I'd probably be causing problems for myself here. Use the bone folder just to round the corners a little bit more and uh, a bit of a nip would probably be a good idea at this point. Just be careful when nipping an actual book, you don't want to impress that bulky corner into the text block. The last corner I'm going to call a tab corner because that's what I was originally um, told that it was called but the only reference I've really found for it is in John Mason's book and he calls it the tongued corner and the purpose of this corner is for uh, thick boards such as in stationary bindings. I'm going to demonstrate it on um, two two and a half mil boards laminated together to make a five mil board. So start by drawing a line 45 degrees to the book, about the thickness of the board plus about a millimetre away from the corner. The tongue goes down the foredge. So draw a line out from the head and the tail and then draw in the tongue or the tab the same thickness as the board. Cut the tongue first up to the level with the fore edge and then cut the 45 degrees up to the tongue.
Once you understand how this corner works, you don't really need to draw it in, you can do it by eye. Start by gluing, turning in the head and the tail. I've gone overboard on the adhesive again. Now it's pretty much the same as a standard corner, except uh, once you turn up the uh, turn in, you uh, turn the tabs down the fore edge. There should be a little bit of uh, or tab or overhang of cloth on the corner just like in the standard corner which you push down over the edge of the board. Push that cloth down pretty firmly so that it doesn't produce too much bulk. And to finish, you do the four edges. Uh, use your bone folder to uh, firmly um, push up the board, uh, cloth on the edge of the board to um, reduce the bulk uh, where the tab is.
method I think produces a rather nice corner on a very thick board. In future videos I'll do uh, leather corners and some other techniques with cloth such as debulking a standard corner.